She read the body. Okay, let's go this way. Okay, we got some stairs up in here. Oh. Hell yeah, I'll take some rope. Now that's weird. That rope... That rope didn't show up when I held down alt. Hmm. Poetry book. A woman from Driftwood with nary a care offered me kisses that answered my prayer. I accepted her gift and then to my dismay a spider she was and I was her buffet. Ugh. Once feasting was over, she licked her red lips. I rose from the floor, still coming to grip. She thanked me for coming and bade her farewell. My prayers indeed answered, though still I did swell. Ugh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> ew. Okay. Broken source collar. In its inactive state, the collar appears to be nothing more than common metal. It can no longer hinder source. Oh, okay. So the red means steel. Okay. Whoops. Let me verify that. I'm actually glad we reloaded because I'd very much like to verify Behind that. Um, the Magister, there's been a Waters is investing. Aren't you good? There we go. Did that rope really not show up when I hit Alt? Oh yeah, dude. I am. I am pressing Alt right now. Wow. Okay. We're gonna have to really look over these rooms. Um. Hmm. Did it show me a... Th it did show me a steel thing. I just totally missed that. Okay. Let's read the poetry book again. Now, how is my... Oh, here's auto sort. And then sort by. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Cool. And I also really like how apparently new items have like a white highlight box around them. Did I see that right? Oh yeah, dude. That's cool. Let me let me make sure I saw that right. Oh. Yep. That's great. That basically invalidates me having to always sort by last picked up to see what items I recently got. So that's excellent. Okay. Anything else in this it room? Seems as though there's a pattern in the blood flow. We can that sit. I'm just gonna take a load off. Alright, let's go talk to Magister Waters. Ugly sight, isn't it? It is. Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. <laughs> wow, I, I'm not a fan of either of these options. Inform her that she wasn't this man's protector, she was his captor. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. Hmm. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Tell her that's a trick you haven't quite mastered. I thought as much. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Okay. Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. So, I just made a decision when I did that. I am going to, with this character, attempt to be as good as I can to my captors and try to free myself through those. Through that. That's what we're going to do. We are going to do everything we can to be to get on the good side of our captors. Let's see if we can talk to them anymore. So, anything interesting for me? Tell her you're still looking around. Right. Tick tock. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go there. Nothing to see here. 
A young magister stands. Okay, we're good to keep moving. No indications of a struggle. Sheep! <laughs> I'm not suited for this. It's sea cow, not sea sheep. Admire the sheep's wool and ask if you might take a bit. Haven't got any shears, have you? People these days. Okay. So if we find some shears, we may be able to come back and get some, uh, something from him. You've picked up a bedroll. Use it to rest and heal your party. A bedroll? Use this item to rest when there are no enemies nearby? Interesting. That's new. More rope. Oh, kids. Oh, man. Ugh. Está no bueno, amigo. No bueno. Wood chips. Okay. Soften them up to avoid injury? I wonder what that means. Uh, looking for secrets, buttons, anything we might find around here. Let's talk to these folks. Ah, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Husband. Uh... Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Allergical to singing. Indeed. Um, play along and take her arm with a grin. Tell the children they must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused <laughs> with anyone else. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve. I think I already like this girl. What? What's so funny? <laughs> her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoes the children away from her with a laugh. What is this going on right here? What's your name? No. Gods, didn't your mother teach you any manners? She got eaten by a void woken. Oh god. That got dark. Ugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and get, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark eyed and dirty haired, and smiles flatly. I like this narrator voice. This is cool. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Say that's true enough, shake her hand, Los, you presume? You presume right. Do you know anything about the murder? Oh, tell her she ought to have a look around with you. You can watch each other's backs. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. Rude! You take care, though. Do you know anything about the murder? Nope. Trying not to find anything out, either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Okay. Suddenly. Her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Grayish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. You! Sorcerer! Blood! No! Go! <laughs> okay. Do you know Losa? She's a really good singer. I'm better though. Listen. La 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 la. Oh, okay, that, that could have been worse. You look like my daddy. His name is Frida. He's waiting for me at home. You're a human, like me. That means we're friends already. My mum told me not to make friends with lizards and elves and dwarves and stuff. But I think they're okay. They are. Don't be racist. What's up, dude? Name? Tags determine how the world interacts with your party members. Custom characters have race, gender, and profession tags. Origin characters also have their own tag. Name? Sigh dreamily and ask him what's in a name anyway. I don't like comedy. Tell him your name. Well, you aren't here on my list. Scrammy. We're trying to catch a killer here. Mad? Hmm. Surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? 
moving obstacles? Quiet long enough for me to listen. Hmm. Okay. Fame. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. Oh. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Reach over and ruffle his hair with a grin. Hmm? What purpose did that serve? Was that a greeting? Was it... Oh! Oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How... difficult. You have my apologies, human. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Look at him cautiously. You're not sure he understands what's happening. Perhaps. Perhaps not. <laughs> Understanding is all rather relative. Take this book, for example. I understand all of it, hey, and yet none of it makes sense. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Talk about most recent threat and how the Magisters have been fighting the Void Woken all over Revelin. Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. Rude. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. Oh. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Why is he so curious about him? The elf's face freezes for just a second before he waves his hand dismissively. Oh, it's just one of my idle curiosities. We mortals do like to consider these things, do we not? Are you not mortal? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. He sounds like one of those robots that's dressed as a person, and he's like, no, I am not a robot. That is ridiculous. I don't know, man. <laughs> Hello, fellow human. Are you enjoying doing human things today? <laughs> Insist, why is he so curious about the gods? No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Hmm. Okay. Oh, he was the skeleton? He was the undead mage? That makes a lot more sense. That makes a lot more sense. So he's wearing a face right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take all the kitchen pots because I can't. Again, if it's not nailed down, it's coming with code. That water barrel, it's mine now. What's up, Namiya? I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. The indignity. Hmm, okay. Here's the Red Prince. We know about this guy. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. If you hear Let's purring, that's Siri up, rubbing the mic. See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Let's see where this leads. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Uh. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Oh, absolutely. I'm a true chef. 
Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Given a sheet of satin, you can make a bum look like a baron. Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Say you most certainly have personal pride. You're no stranger to combs, powders, and perfumes. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. <laughs> so, three questions asked, three questions asked. Oh god, here we go. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook, tailor, and groom. Well, that just about settles it. I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. <laughs> You're over the moon! Tell him you accept. Of course you accept. Mine wasn't an offer, it was an order. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoo! Oh, okay, buddy. Well, that's one of great. Us kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Wait, bucket helmets. Mad? mad? No. Insufferable. Surely. But minus one initiative. But it looks so good. I'll tell you if you can. Oh my lord, that is next level cosmetically. Nice. Nice. Um. Okay. Uh, anything over here? Nope. I think we're good. Oh, we can get the beer. Mug of beer, effect unknown. Well. I think we can figure out what that does. You got this wolf on a leash. Mug of beer. As soon as the inquisitor Mug of gets beer. Here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with it. I mean it's it is science after all. I am drunk. Minus one intelligence heals ten percent and set drunk for two turns. Oh my. What does drunk do? Intelligence minus one. Lucky charm plus two. Drinking makes you luckier? Okay, we'll have to keep that, but that, that could be super useful. Hmm. Alright, what's up, Seville? An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old... Drunk exploring. <laughs> I like it. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Ask if you may join her. She shakes her head. Oh. Game for one, I'm afraid. Oh. Rolling dice. Deciding fates. Laugh. Can she read the future in cow trails as well? She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. Uh. Okay. Um. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? Sure. She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Well, we just met. But that's okay. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, you lay awake thinking of someone back home. A very special someone. Holy shit, is she right? You were reminiscing <laughs> about the things you used to do together. Admit, white-eyed, that's exactly right. Oh my. Of course it is. The truth's right there. Skin deep. Hmm. But don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. Thanks. I don't lick 
until good god <laughs> ask whose fate those dice of her are deciding don't worry honey it isn't yours she looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips never say never though dude i am loving this narrator i don't know why but it, it makes me feel like i'm watching a movie or something all right, Beast, what's up, dude? A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Ask him what you're meant to be hearing. The ship, of course. Quiet and listen to the sounds of the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? The sea is angry like it's trying to capsize, capsize the ship. The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger. It's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. Hmm. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. Close your eyes and try to let the ambient sounds on the ship fade away. There now, just like that. Squeak. Aha. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. Yeah. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. Nod, you heard it. What's it supposed to be? It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Hmm. Yeah, just wanted to, by the way, throw out there real quick. Um, one of the reasons that this channel, especially the chat, is as cool as it is, is the mod team. So just to make sure we're on the same page, I have the mods back 100%. They basically help me run the channel. I love them to death and they're amazing. So, mod love, thank you for all you do, guys. And for the record, all the mods pretty much act exactly how I tell them to. So, if you have a problem with the mods, you basically have a problem with me. And I will find you. I have a particular set of skill. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, never mind. All right, um, so let's keep going. For my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Okay, um, why are you so excited about going there? Uh, no indeed, boy, but that ain't my final destination. Oh. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. Hmm. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Hmm. Cock an eyebrow. <laughs> if he's hatching an escape plan, you want in. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, beatific. and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Beat beatific? Wow. That is not a word you hear often. Blissfully happy. I like it. Hmm. Okay, so, well, we let him know that we wanted to go with him. What about this guy? What do you have to say, Gil? You one of them. A divine order loyal. They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Oh, he thinks they killed him. Uh, there has been a murder, your majesty. Maybe There's a greasy the key over here. All right, Magister Victor. Let's talk to this guy. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sub story somewhere else. Rude. But I will say I'm loving these dudes' outfits. Hmm. What's up? Oh, this is another one of the uh, the name bros. Seems to me you should be a little A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. 
A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp here found. Hmm. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. For some reason, your instinct cries out to salute Ifen, but you hold yourself back. For some reason, your instinct cries out to salute Ifen, so you do. Ifen seems amused at the gesture, but he bats your arm down from the salute when the Magister sees what you're doing. You served? Tell him indeed you did. You served Lucian. Me too. A long, long time ago now. Long before Source became reason to leash a man like a dog. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Huh. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifa. And now, you. Ask Ilfen why the magister suspects him of murder. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. So, say that you're still curious about the murder. Did he do it? No. Hmm. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Hmm. Uh, Ko, just turning in, can you tell me us about the class you picked and what build you're planning on playing? Um, I am playing a custom human that is going to be primarily our main environmental interaction guy and our primary main tank with a sword and shield or a one hand and shield. I don't know what else we're going to do for the character. It's going to kind of evolve with the playthrough. Yeah. Hmm. What did he do to find himself at the mercy of a subordinate? Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy away from interested parties. Do you know anything about where you're headed? The joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Hmm. So you'd like to meet Alexander. You'd show him exactly what you think of his bloody divine order. Easy now. I might think the same. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You? What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name. Tell him your name is Victor. That's right. V-I-K-T-A-R. Victor. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. Uh-oh. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. I hope that doesn't come back to bite us later. Oh, young sidestepper. I completely realize that. Yep, we've we've actually all the people, all the main people we've talked to in here are the other origin characters at the beginning of the game. Even the undead guy, he's in the corner wearing an elf mask. Away with you at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Okay. Awesome. So we found the key. Uh, is there anything we want to do in our inventory yet? I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. Uh, one of us would kill our own. Churl and Chuck. Oh, yeah. Can we just oh, interesting. I think the poetry book changed to Churl and Chuff after we read it. Interesting. Do backpacks work? Use a backpack to store grenades, arrows, or potions. Place it in your hotbar to quickly access its contents. Oh, cool! Okay. So that's what it's for. Great. Okay. Can we auto-sort these? 
Oh, I wish we could sort these. That'd be a great thing to add into a patch. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. Looks like we got all sorts.